morning family how are you guys doing i know this has been a very long awaited video um i feel like you know i just threw what i was going through on you guys without fully explaining what's going on and so here we go this is what's going on make sure you like this video subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when the next video drops okay let's get into it so about three four months ago i started experiencing cramping just because like literally i'll be walking around just randomly and start cramping and so then i, I didn't think nothing of it i thought that maybe it was just gas because i ain't gonna lie i'm real gassy i get trapped air all the time i've been like that since i was young like teenage years so i just thought it was always trapped gas but then i started noticing that it wasn't traveling like my like the trapped gas usually does the trapped air usually does and so because like it will start in one place and travel to another and that's usually always my indication, okay, nothing's wrong with me, it's just trapped air. But it wasn't doing that. It was just staying in one spot. And so I was like, what is going on? This is weird. And so then I started noticing that I was spotting, spotting every time we would have sex. And so I was like, mm, this is not normal either. And so I started noticing there was a little slight discomfort while having sex. I was like, hmm, this isn't normal either. And so I, I, but my little woman was coming up. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wait till my little woman appointment. And I'm mention all this to my doctor. Now, keep in mind, I, I got diagnosed with cervical cancer 14 years ago. So they always look out for like, the signs of progressed cervical cancer, right? There's not, you know, really any signs that cervical cancer is there in its earlier stages, which is when I caught it in its earlier stage. But once it progresses and it goes through the rest of your organs and things like that, then you'll start to see other signs like bleeding after sex, unexpectedly cramping, um, pain during sex, um, file discharge and things, heavy bleeding, things like that. And so I was like, let me make sure I mention this to her while she's there. And so test came back normal, HPV, cancer free, thank God, still. And um, she said my cervix looked normal from what she could see. But she did set me up for ultrasound. Listen, ladies, it is very important that you find a doctor that wants to hear what you have to say, that's going to listen to you, that's going to pay attention to the things that you say and not look at them as you being overly dramatic or overly emotional. They're going to do the test. Even if they don't feel like the test is going to come back a certain way, they're not going to question you. You are paying them for these services. You are paying for these tests. So they're going to give you the test. That's the kind of doctor you need. My doctor, when I told her everything going on with me, she didn't question it. She was like, okay, so let's do an ultrasound to get a deeper look. I mean, you look fine from what I can see, but I can't see everything. So let's get an ultrasound just to make sure past your cervix, nothing's going on. I'm so grateful for her. That's how she's always been. Very thorough. Um, she, your bedside manners are amazing. Like You deserve that type of medical care especially when it comes to your female parts you deserve that type of medical care that really does make the difference in someone who dies from cervical cancer because it was misdiagnosed or somebody who ends up living and just having to have a leap procedure or just having to have a hysterectomy to get rid of it and you know and they, they're helped they can be helped um that makes all the difference so we i didn't go for the ultrasound because my pap smear results came back you know negative like everything was great and so I was like, okay, maybe it was just trap gas. Maybe I'm just, you know, imagining things. Maybe he was just going too rough while we were having sex. I don't know. Uh, about a couple of weeks later, I kept experiencing the same stuff. And one day it was so bad. It was debilitating. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go for this ultrasound. That was the video that you guys saw when I was at the doctor getting the ultrasound. And honestly, I was nervous because you just don't know. You don't know what they're gonna find, but I'm so glad I didn't let me being nervous stop me. Like, I know people, my mom, she won't go and get things checked because she just don't wanna know. She just don't wanna know what's going on. She's like, I get it, something might be happening, but I would rather just not know than actually know, and now I feel like, you know, now I'm dying or whatever the case may be. But knowing is half the battle. And if at the end of the day, you don't know what's going on with you, you'll never have an opportunity to fix it. So um, I went. And sure enough, they found a crap load of stuff. This is my ovaries, um, my PCOS, my um, uterus has um, two fibroids, or what they feel like is fibroids. Right now it's fibroids, and that's what we're gonna claim. We're not claiming any cancer. We're not claiming that over here. But two, two, two small tumors, um, 
adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is a condition where it's kind of like endometriosis. It's a sister of endometriosis. And it basically kind of like the cells grow and thicken the line of the uterus on the inside. Well, the cells grow on the outside of the uterus and into the muscle, which makes you have a bigger uterus than normal. So I have a large uterus, um, I have adenomyosis, and I have two cysts on my cervix. So basically my whole reproductive system is just struggling. Um, so Jonathan and I just came to the conclusion that we're just gonna go ahead and just do a hysterectomy. I've been through enough with this part of my body. Um, and because I did have cancer, it was like, why hold on to this and risk you getting ovarian cancer or uterine cancer? Like, no, we're, we're just gonna let this go. Cause clearly your, your, your reproductive system is uh, fighting for its life. So go ahead and put it out of its misery because you don't need to be fighting for your life trying to hold on to it. So we decided to go ahead and have a hysterectomy because my doctor says, I can't do it. Because if I do it, I'd have to give you a cesarean. I'd have to cut you like you getting a cesarean because laparoscopically, it's not possible because your uterus is too big. It won't come out that way. I'm like, so I'm gonna have to have a, I'm, I've been escaped a cesarean three times, okay? I've had, I had all three of my girls vaginally. And I'm still going to have a cesarean? She was like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna send you to a specialist OBGYN office, right, right by, right in the same building as we are. And they specialize in robotic, minimally invasive surgeries. And so what they do is they cut a small slit on each side of my, my belly button on my stomach. And they, I'm like, but you might as well just go ahead, but whatever. And they, <laughs> they cut uh, into my navel. And so it'll be the three and the robotics will go through those holes to sever my, you know, my, my uterus and detach it and bring it on out through my vagina. And so um, this is the most minimally invasive way to do it. And so I had to meet with another OBGYN in that office. Amazing woman and come to find out she actually trained underneath my OBGYN. So she is in good, I'm, I'm in great hands. She reminded me so much of my OB. Um, and sure enough, of my own doctor, and sure enough, she trained underneath my doctor, and so I'm excited about that. Um, but she tells me she thinks I also have endometriosis. So she does a pelvic exam on me, and there's certain spots that they look for that they test while doing a pelvic exam so that they can see if, you know, their theory is correct. Sure enough, she pushed on those spots, and it hurt. And so she was like, yeah, you definitely have adenomyosis because when I pushed down on your uterus at the top, it was tender. However, I definitely think you also have endometriosis because there's just certain spots that it automatically just grows in if it's gonna grow. And when I touch that spot, you, 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 you seem to be in a lot of pain, but you were fine when I touched everywhere else. And so I really think you do. And I wanna get an MRI just to make sure it's, it's locally around the uterus. We don't wanna leave any of it behind. I didn't know this, but endometriosis can grow onto your other organs. Go figure. It can grow into your bladder, your kidneys. I was like, what? So they did an MRI scan just to make sure that there is no endometriosis anywhere other than my uterus. And thank God there's not. And so she is going to go in and clean up the the the, the areas around my uterus that does have the endometriosis growing there and um, make sure she gets it all out. That was what the MRI was for. Um, so then I now have to get a biopsy to make sure that my over my uterus does not have any cancer cells. Because if it does, then that's a totally different type of surgery. And oncologists will have to be on board on that at, at that surgery. So they have to make sure they cannot do this hysterectomy without. If you're going to plan to get a hysterectomy, more than likely your doctor will have you do a biopsy because they have to make sure there is no cancer before they do the surgery to make sure the right medical team is on board after, I mean during surgery. So I go for that on Wednesday, and I've never had a biopsy of, a, of an organ that's not easily accessed. The last time I had a biopsy, the only time I had a biopsy was on my cervix. My cervix is so local that they just went in through my vagina and clipped the piece of my cervix, and that was that. It was very painful. Cramped, I cramped a lot. Um, I had to be off of sex for three days. Um, they put medicine on the tampon. I put the tampon in there. Um, but I've never had biopsy done for an organ that wasn't easily accessible. And so I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous. And apparently she does, she sends in a prescription for you to get Valium and pain medicine. Um, you can't take it until you're in her office. 
So you take the one vitamin and the one pain medicine at the same time right before she does the procedure. So clearly it's going to be quite uncomfortable. So I'm very, 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 very nervous. Um, but I do want to make sure it's not cancer with my history. I do want to make sure it's not cancer to make sure that, you know, everything is happening the way it's supposed to. I appreciate my medical team being extremely thorough, being extremely thorough in, 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 in what they're doing to make sure that this is not a botched procedure. This is a one-time thing. I don't have to go back in there and do this again. Um, they are very adamant about me keeping my ovaries, which makes me feel like they're not just doing this just to get a paycheck. They're not just doing this to, you know, they're doing this because we all can agree that this is going to make my life better, give me a better quality of life. They are going to start hormone therapy to help me with my PCOS. PCOS is um, a condition in your ovaries where you basically produce more of a male hormone than you're supposed to. And so that's why you get uh, women with a lot of facial hair, um, women with heavy acne. Um, it can get real bad. I actually saw a show where this lady had like literally a full beard. Um, it's poor thing, but they were able to do laser to help her get rid of it. And so that was a blessing, but it causes infertility because remember, we are women. And so we ovulate and produce estrogen so this hormone kind of blocks that and so unfortunately this can keep you from ovulating and it's funny how long have i been dealing with this is the question that i have been racking that has been racking my brain because it took me almost three years to get pregnant with rain it took me a year and a half to get pregnant with autumn and the only reason why i didn't take me longer was because with autumn we did do medical intervention where they took the catheter into my uterus and <clears throat> threw my cervix into my uterus and released an ink that ink highlighted my tubes on the screen so that they can see if my tubes were closed and maybe that's why. Well, they like to call this at my doctor's office the tube cleaning because it kind of washes and cleans out your, your tubes. And because of that cleaning, a egg will release. They told me that it takes about two months for this to happen. The earliest I've ever heard someone get pregnant after this procedure is two months. Well, I asked her before I left, how long should I wait to have sex? She said, give it at least three days so you don't want to set up an infection. Well, day three came, we had sex. Two weeks later, I found out I was pregnant with autumn. And so with rain, we didn't want to do that again because it was a very painful procedure. And so we didn't want to go through that again. We was like, listen, we got the two that we said we wanted for sure. We always said we wanted two kids for sure. If God blesses us with just one, we're happy with that. Because like I said, with that, with cervical cancer, I was told I would never carry my own kids. So we were fortunate to have at least two. We weren't trying to push our love with God, okay? And so we said, God, if this baby is meant to come, you're going to bring us this baby. That's that. Well, two and a half, almost three years later, randomly, out of nowhere, unexpectedly, we found out we were pregnant. Um... It actually was during a time where we said we were going to get back on birth control because we were experiencing some financial hardships. Jonathan had just lost his car, but God is good. We actually ended up getting another car, a family size car, perfect for the five of us, right before she was born. Well, not right before, but in September, she was born in January. So God is good. He worked it all out for us. Like literally, he he took he took our fears and, and turned them into gold. Such a blessing. I'm wondering, like, how long have I been dealing with this? Because clearly something was happening to keep a girl, to keep your girl from ovulating. Like, and I didn't know what was going on. I always knew, okay, I'm obviously suffering from secondary infertility, but why? What is happening? And because I wasn't experiencing, you know, I was in postpartum. I was, I had a lot going on, and so I probably was experiencing this type of stuff, but wasn't paying attention. Again, I thought it was gas. <laughs> and so, the, how many times did I think it was gas when it was actually pain because of the things going on in me? And so. That is what's going on thus far. Um, like I said, Wednesday, we will do the biopsy. And then when the biopsy results come back, we're gonna do a telemedicine call so that she can get go over the results with me. And then at that time, we'll schedule the hysterectomy. I'm so nervous. Um, I've never had a surgery to this extent before. The lead procedure was so in and out. They didn't even have to put me to sleep. She said that I could have been wide awake with that. Like, But I chose to be put to sleep because my nerves are bad. But, but this is just so much different. And I'm not gonna lie, I have a lot of feelings about like, okay, I'm losing a part of what makes me a woman. I'm losing the shell, the the safe space that my children laid in for nine months. Like to just be rid of that, it does bring me some sadness. Um, I love being a woman. I love being a mother. I love what my body has done for me. And I, I don't know, did I feel my body or is my body feeling me? Like what is going on? Like I have all these thoughts in my head and I know that God is good. And I'm leaning on that because at the end of the day, God did bless me with three babies despite everything my body is going through. I said I wasn't gonna cry. 
he did. He blessed me with three babies. You hear her? She's out there with her daddy. He really blessed me with three babies that I was never supposed to have. So I'm so grateful to him. But this just feels so final. I don't know if y'all watched our vasectomy video, but in our vasectomy video, we talked about how God led Jonathan to make that decision. He just felt very convicted. He had a dream that he had to sit at the table and explain to the girls why mommy died. He had that dream around when Autumn was born or when Autumn was a baby. Mm -hmm. So he was always very skeptical about me having a third baby. He was always so nervous, but I told him to trust God. And if God wants us to have another baby, he will give it to us and he will protect us. And that's why we chose not to do the medical intervention because we feel like medical intervention is not God. Not that not that Autumn was not a God sin. She was, but it's, it's not an act of God. I think that us getting pregnant so, so fast with her was God, but I don't think the intervention itself was God. And so um, we didn't want to force a, a third baby because of our own wants, if that's not what God desired for us, you know? We wanted to do what God desired for us. We wanted to, if God really desires us to have a third baby, he's gonna make that happen. And if he doesn't, then that's just an idea we'll have to grieve and that's that, you know? And so when we got pregnant with, with Rain, we knew it was God. And But Jonathan felt so convicted that this was it, that, that this was, this was the completion of our family. And he got to listen to me. And at first I was so angry with him, y'all. Like, I was so angry. I was like, like, I'm still young. I get that you're six years older than me. I get you're 42, 40, almost 43 years old. But I, I'm still, well, 41, almost 42. But I'm still young. I could have another baby. And he was like, but at what cost? At what risk? At what risk? This was so hard for you to get through. This nine months was so hard for you to get through. So much harder than the first two. And then the second one was harder for you to get through than the first one. Like every baby, you struggle more and more and more. I just, I can't do it. I can't see you go through that again. All of that to just end up here and to really be done having babies. It's so hard to think that this is truly it. Like this is the last two year old I'll ever have. And I get it, he had to say to me. And so I was done having children. But the sex can be reversed. This can be reversed once it's gone. It's gone. And it's just so final. And I, I, I'm, I I'm not, I don't know. I just, I did do a why me moment. I have a why me. I had a why me moment. Like, why God? Why me? Why, why did my reproductive system have to fail me so horribly over these last 15 years, 14 years? Like, why me? But then I look at, moments like the one I shared with me unbraiding a girl's hair. I think about why not me? Everything happened for a reason. And that moment that I shared the other day with me undoing the girls, undoing the autumn's braids with London and kissing rain, that would have never happened because, you know, had I not had London when I had her, she wouldn't be at the age she is now to be sitting next to me looking like such a big girl. And had I not had London when I had her, then autumn either wouldn't exist or she wouldn't be at the age she is. And had I not had Autumn when I did, Rain wouldn't exist. It wouldn't be at the age that she is, which is all three of them are such a perfect age for me. I'm 36 with an 11, 7, and 2-year-old. I mean, perfect dynamic. Perfect dynamic. So why not me? I'm strong. I'm capable. God built me for this because he knew this was going to be my story. He set me up for this. Just like he set you up for every single thing you're experiencing. This wasn't the only thing we were dealing with. We also were dealing with eviction. We were about to get evicted, y'all. Y'all know we doing this thing full time. And so at the end of the day, it doesn't it doesn't come easy. You know, the brand deals wasn't just rolling in at one point. They are not, I ain't gonna lie. We got a lot of brand deals out there, but they weren't just rolling in at one point. And then y'all know we were doing DoorDash, but for whatever reason, our DoorDash app got deactivated right when we came back from spring break. We spent a whole month trying to figure out what we're going to do, putting in job applications and, and trying to get some money in. But it didn't work, and we ended up getting having a, they ended up having a file eviction on us. But God is good. God is good. Let me tell you why God is good. Because we literally opened up every door. We we unlocked every door we possibly can for God to walk through, walk us through whichever one he chooses. We pitched to some RV companies to get a collaboration with an RV company. 
Maybe we'll live in an RV and travel the country. Like homeschool our kids and be a traveling family. Maybe that's what God is leading us to. Jonathan put in some job applications. Maybe it's just time for me to go back to work. Contacted DoorDash and appealed our app being deactivated. Like we we unlocked all these doors. And he pushed the, he put us through the ones he wanted us to put us through. We did hear back from one of the RV vans, brands. Our DoorDash app did get reactivated. Um, we did not hear back from any of those job applications that he put in. And our apartments actually ended up giving us two extra weeks because the, the court date wasn't as soon as they thought it was going to be. So we actually had two extra weeks to get this money together, which was perfect because the DoorDash app reactivated just in time. And literally within that time frame, we had to make sure rent got paid. That $4,000 got to them. We were like $1,200 short. Literally, y'all, we made more money in those two days than we ever had, ever. We made literally almost $300 both days. We have never made that kind of money doing DoorDash on one day. Maybe 150 to 200, but not 300. Like God really pulled, did a big one, okay? God did a big, big, big one, okay? And when I tell you between that and all the goodness that he's brought me, in this situation with my cert, with my with my reproductive system, I know God is real. I know He is so good, and I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for all of you, all of your prayers. And it's been it's been hard having her here, and you know doing what we got to do. And I'm not feeling well a lot lately. The fibroids were seen on the MRI as well. The ultrasound was three weeks before the MRI, and the fibroids have grown a little bit. So I am in a lot of pain, and it's just. But we we are grateful for y'all. We are grateful for all of your prayers. We are grateful. We're just we're just grateful. Like we we oh, we're so grateful for these platforms. So grateful for these platforms. And I'm gonna bring Jonathan in here real quick so he can say what he needs to say. Um, because we both love you guys so much, and we've been wanting to do this video. But rain has been you know, raining, as y'all can hear. She was out there screaming at him. But we just we appreciate you guys. All right. Uh, definitely, y'all. Um, first, I'm, I guess I'm going backwards and forward. Um, y'all prayers, y'all prayers of protection, prayers of comforting our heart, minds, and souls is deeply appreciated by you all. Uh, we got millions of comments to look at and a chance to respond to. But these heartfelt words, I'm telling you right now, anyone you watching that to the prayer through a comment has been responding yet, I'm going to tell you that your thoughts about us, your prayer about us has filled our hearts, has allowed us to see deeper than we can see before we even saw the prayer that you prayed for us to give us hope and give us faith that we will pull through this, that we will see light at the end of the tunnel. And um, that uh, feels so hard with, uh, with a lot of encouragement that God will see us through this. Also to the thank you just for being for us, being with us uh, through all the storms that we've been through. Because um, just going through things that we went through, God gave us a different um, thought about panicking, mm. a different thought about uh, anxiety, fear. He gave us a new outlook, about, uh, outlook of that by taking us so deep into areas we've never been before, mm -hmm. facing eviction, um, facing uh, car repossession, all these things. He took us so deep to allow us to see that he's holding us, he's comforting us, he's seeing us through everything. Just don't worry, don't don't fret. Just get out of your way and let me get in your way. Mm -hmm. And let me walk in front of you and lead you. Don't try to hold this grip of power because you can walk, you can see, you can taste, you can smell, you can think, you can execute things in this external world, but let me build up your internal world so I can guide you, <clears throat> so I can be there for you and walk you through this. So as we go on this new journey, that's what God has equipped me with. I think God wanted me to see how deep um, um, he goes for us in our marriage and for us as individuals to give me what I need to cover my wife and give her what she needs to go through this new stage of life for us to do this together and to give us the knowledge and wisdom to walk through it all. Okay? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. God God really show, shown us a, a deeper, deeper side of him, a deeper side of what his creation is and how he wants to cover it and watch over it and nourish it. And um, that that is uh, something deep to to take in and really to be in joy for, because you know that you know God is real. If you, if you, if you ever even questioned it, you know, guys, I'm gonna show you how real I am. I'm gonna show you how real I am. Keep on believing in me and walk with me. And I'm gonna show you how I can, how I can turn things around, how I can make things happen. So just thank you for being there with us. Thank you for loving us through our struggles. Um, and if, if, if this encourage you to hold on to your love, to hold on to the ones that you are with, that you are struggling to get to a one place with, hopefully this inspires you to see a different side of what you never had even just explored into, to, to, uh, to, to regenerate your love, regenerate your marriage through God and Christ, so it can strengthen you more than ever before, and to see that your treasure that you have, that you hug on all the time, is deeper than what you ever thought before. 
so we take on these things in our journey uh, to say, you know, hopefully we're all inspiration to y'all, y'all inspiration to us. And um, I'm ready to support my wife on this journey and be there with her. And y'all just pray for us and be there with us. Um, just be with us. Here comes me. Here's coming one. <laughs> you think the slow entrance. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. I see you. Yeah. You probably. Yeah, I saw you, baby. You Say hi. Say hi. Hi. Where's mine? Yeah, every time you come here, you got a snack in your hand. I was strong. I got one. I got one. That's what you wanted? Yes. What you want to tell everybody? Bye, mommy. Bye, baby. Yeah. Come on. Oh, let's go watch Mickey Mouse. Go watch Mickey Mouse. Sit down and watch Mickey. But we love you, and like you said, we pray that we continue to be impactful to you. Um, we're not sharing this journey just to share, oh, I'm having his race with me. We're sharing this journey because we didn't get to film our cancer journey, but I honestly would not have made it through that without Jonathan's support. And it was just so beautiful to watch him love me despite what my body might not be able to do for him. And I mean, he married me literally not knowing if I'd ever be able to give him children. Um, so I wanted to, to document this journey because I didn't get to document that one. And I really wanted to show what a man's support through this looks like. So many women have said in comments throughout the different platforms we've posted this content on that they were, they were alone. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's hard when you don't have God's love in human form to lean on. You know God's love is there, but having it in human form is just so comforting. Yes. Um, he blesses us with, with angels that he uses to do his work for us here on earth. And Jonathan is definitely that angel for me. And I just wanted to show what that looks like. Because if a husband and a wife may not be going through it now, they could go through something similar later. And they'll have the tools. They'll have the keys. They'll know a husband will, there's going to be a husband out there that will know his part. Like, I saw this guy do this for his wife to comfort her in this time. Let me try that technique, you know, or let me try something similar. And so that's really the goal is to just help anyone that's going through this or could be going through this to see how you can aid your partner in getting through. Yes. On both ends, because him being a caretaker, he needs, you know, that love and support as well from me. Verse, and, and of course, I need the love and support from him. How we love and support each other through this is part of the impact we're trying to make. Yes, the most important thing that I thought about throughout the way he was talking was that uh, like a light bulb went through my head, you know, that we're sharing this. Um, it's not for our game, for God's game. Mm. So I'm telling you now, God created a beautiful marriage. God created a beautiful covenant. He and, blessed it, you. and if you follow God's heart and what he wants for marriage and for the covenant, you will see God's promise in it. You will mm -hmm. see God's favor. You will see God pouring into you in ways you never thought before. He will give you things that be added on to you that will never be taken away because you follow God's promise. Mm -hmm. And this is why um, we know us being together, knowing that the, the challenge that we did have, like the, the, the possibilities of her having children, it, it, didn't, it didn't bother me none. So I know who I wanted to marry. And you know, I knew who I wanted to marry, who I wanted to be faithful to, who I wanted to follow God's principles of marriage, you know, and, and strengthen the covenant and follow what, what God said about marriage. I know this, this is the one I wanted to be a husband too. And God's promise found behind it. So just remember that every husband that's there, you know, just remember that once you uh, fulfill God's promise in marriage, you will see his promise in marriage. You will see the stuff be added on to you. So just don't hold your head down. Be there for your wife. Love on your wife. And the same love you gave to her, she will turn it back to you. Mm -hmm. Sevenfold, tenfold, one hundredfold, whatever number you want, she will give it back to you. She is. And she forever will. That's right. Mm -hmm. Love y'all. Like I said, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you can know when another video drops. We are filming everything, even surgery, everything happening after yes, and before the surgery. Yep. We're filming it all. And so we pray that this continue to impact you. And please let us know if you have any questions um, for us about surgery, about our marriage, about anything. We're here for you and we love you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. <laughs>